Uh, this well, this isn't like the exact arguing like against him completely. I don't I don't know who did that. I just want to give a warning. I, I don't know he was doing that speech. Um, okay. But yeah. Okay. On Monday night, millions of people tuned in to watch UConn play Kentucky in the NAP, the NCAA basketball championship. The television station CBS paid the NCAA ten point eight billion dollars in order to, to broadcast the game for the next fourteen years. If Kentucky had had one on Monday night, Kentucky coach John Calipari would have received a three hundred and seventy five thousand dollar bonus. Instead he will somehow have to survive off of his five point two million dollar annual contract. <laughs> <laughs> Probably no one other than Calipari's family went to the stadium or watched on T V to see him sitting on the bench drawing up plays. Fans watch the games to see the ten student athletes on the court facing off against each other. And the fact is they receive nothing from the game. The issue of whether student athletes should be paid or not has become a topic of debate for years. It recently has gained even more attention after the Northwestern football team was granted the ability to form a union by the Chicago branch of the National Labor Relations Board. Many people believe if they choose to form a union, it will lead eventually to more benefits for student athletes, including compensation and other scholarships. The issue has been an interest to me since I was a young gamer, young video gamer, and researched why the players in my NCAA football game only have their numbers and not their names, like in Madden. I felt that it was because athletes can't have can't have their names used, as they are considered am amateur athletes that would have to be compensated for being in the game. Back then, that made no sense to me. Today, it still makes no sense to me. <laughs> it is so obvious to tell who the players are based off of, because the game uses the exact same numbers, size, and looks as the real players. It still seems like a loophole by the NCAA to use the, the players to make money while avoiding paying them. Regardless, the issue still captivates my attention, and I try to read articles about why athletes should get paid and why they shouldn't because it is a very complicated issue. An example of an article about why athletes should get paid is one by Paul Doherty found on uh, sportsillustrated.com. He argues that athletes have certain advantages over the normal student, including scholarships, um, the opportunity to receive a great education, and the chance to showcase their talent for future employees. Doherty is certainly not alone with these beliefs. In a poll taken by USA Today, 64% of adults agreed that student-athletes shouldn't be paid. While I can see Doherty make some good points, today I'm going to dispute the theory shared by him and the 64% of adults by arguing that the scholarship is not worth the amount it seems, the quality of education certain athletes are receiving is not very high, and that certain athletes are being taken advantage of. The amount of scholarship money received by the students rarely covers the entire cost of attending the university. The difference between what the scholarship is worth and the actual cost of attending school can be thousands of dollars. A cap has been agreed upon by all the, the schools and the NCAA to make sure that this, that this cost cannot be covered by the schools. According to ESPN, a lawsuit has been filed by a West Virginia football player against the NCAA and the major conferences in order to try and increase the scholarship cap to include things like gas, food, and other expenses. This is not an isolated problem, as many of the athletes that help make the schools millions of dollars struggle to pay for the necessary expenses. A prominent and relevant example of this is UConn guard Shabazz Napier, who is seen by many as a hero, who is seen by many of the school's fans as a hero after leading them to the national championship on Monday. In an interview with the Connecticut Mirror, Napier admitted that there are nights he goes to bed sorry because he can't afford food. Now the, argue can, the argument can be made that the average student um, suffers similar conditions str struggling to make ends meet. My counter to that argument would be the average student just did, didn't just win the Final Four MVP of a tournament in front of 80,000 people. It definitely seems a bit off that the star player of a tournament that, that saw his coach get a $166,000 bonus goes home starving at night. The argument can also be made by many that support the current NCAA athlete setup that students are receiving a great education that will prove to be invaluable in the future. The education is extremely important because 98.5% of basketball and football players don't go pro, according to the documentary titled School, The Price of College Sports. There are many different accounts 
in the documentary, in the documentary, questioning how valuable and authentic the education these students receiving actually is. One former Maryland quarterback said that the team motto is "Seize Get Degrees." He went on to say it was a known fact that the main responsibility of a football player in terms of academics was to make sure they did the bare minimum to stay eligible and then focus mainly on football. A more extreme example is what occurred at North Carolina. The school had an, an independent research class which became known as a paper class. No attendance was required and the students only had to submit one paper at the end of the semester which they were automatically given an A or B on. The class was filled primarily with football and basketball players and the practice went on for over a decade. Examples like these two occur at big time football and basketball schools all the time. The reason the NCAA, NCAA and schools are able to get away with not paying athletes is because of the education they are receiving. While in reality, the pressure to perform on the field or court and make money for the schools um, means academics often takes a backseat to sports. If nothing is being learned at these schools, then the question becomes how much is the education actually worth? The 98.5% that won't play in the pros are now extremely poorly prepared for life after college. The main issue at hand here is the way the NCA and the schools use the athletes to profit while making sure the athletes get none of the money that they have earned. As noted previously, college athletes can't be in video games as they would have to be compensated by the gaming for use of their rights. Similarly, schools can sell jerseys with a fan's favorite player's number, but without the name on the back of his jersey. In both cases, the players have no say in whether their number is found on have no say in whether um, they can stop the school or the NCAA from doing this. As if, as if it's not bad enough the NCAA uses athletes to make money in the video games, they also won't allow players to use their own name and accomplishment to make money for themselves. In an incident described on FoxSports.com this summer, Texas A&M quarterback Johnny Manziel caused quite a stir when he was accused of allegedly accepting $7,500 in return for signing his own name on some memorabilia and photographs. The NCAA, of course, tre treated this as, as if they heard he had been dealing heroin out of his dorm room and intensely <laughs> investigated the situation, including a six-hour interrogation of Manziel, until they concluded they couldn't prove he accepted any money. In another infuri infuriating incident, the NCAA reported um, but in another incident reported by ESPN, five Ohio State players were suspended five games in 2011 for selling their own gear and Big Ten championship rings to the owner of tattoo parlors in return for, for cash and tattoos. <laughs> Many of the players claimed the money was for their families. Uh, they didn't claim that about the tattoos. <laughs> Whether their reasoning is to be believed or not, though, that's up to y'all. The bigger issue here is that the NCAA and schools are saying, we can sell your rights and jerseys for millions, but you can't sell your end things for any money at all. The NCAA then defends this behavior by using the outdated amateur model that was created over half a century ago. Despite my fury with the NCAA, I again admit this is a complicated issue. Many questions arise. Which sports should receive money? Will the sports that don't receive, receive money become less important? How much do athletes get paid? The answer to these questions are tricky and a major part of why nothing has changed. But for me, the first thing that needs to happen is the student athletes need to start having more of a voice on what's going on. Whether a union is the answer or not, I'm not sure. But, but they currently have no say, and that's not right. Second, athletes should be able to make money money off of their name and accomplishments, whether that be jersey sales or autographs. My final suggestion is that the scholarship be increased to include all the costs of attending college. Again, a solution is not easy, but there are a lot smarter people out than me out there that should be able to solve it. <laughs> all I know is something must change. For those of you who, stu who still don't agree, I find it hard to believe you would be pretty furious if you had a skill that seemed to be helping everyone make money except for you. Thank you. Any questions?